providing electrical connections now and uh, also providing the propellants that we're loading into the, the vehicle. Yeah. Uh, we're just now under four minutes until liftoff of the Starship flight test. Um, we've been following along for it, what honestly seems like days and days now, but really it kind of comes down to, to get to where we are today. Uh, now, fast forwarding a little bit, um, we have the opportunity to hold, if necessary, at 40 seconds, um, and we are able to hold there for about 15 minutes uh, or up to 15 minutes uh, and still be able to lift off. Yeah, and that's a little bit different from Falcon uh, for the propellant sequence on Falcon that um, uh, we don't have the opportunity to hold. So that's a cool new capability on Starship. Yep. Right now, T minus three minutes, 10 seconds and counting. We got some great views from the drone. It's nice that uh, the fog is slowly lifting. We get some of the blue skies, hopefully good views. What we're waiting for right now is closeout of propellant loading on the first stage. That should be wrapping up here shortly. In fact, it looks like uh, fuel fill and drain valves are coming closed. That means first stage is fully loaded, second stage fully loaded, and that 10 million pounds of propellant on board the Starship launch vehicle. I want to take a quick moment to say that the crowd energy here is electric. I feel like it's Falcon Heavy test demo all over again. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully you'll hear us as we get into the plus count. But right now, next activity is coming up. The flight termination system arms at T minus two minutes. Thrust vector control checkouts at T minus two minutes. And then after that, major activity will be the T minus 40 second gate. There's a view looking up at the 33 Raptor engines. There are 20 engines in a circle on the outside. And as Shiva said earlier, 13 engines on the center. Those are the ones that gimbal and steer the vehicle. <laughs> Love this view. These are the 33 Raptor engines at the base of the super heavy booster. I think we can see those wiggles now. We're currently inside 90 seconds. Next major activity, T minus 40 seconds. That is a gate, a decision point. We're waiting. Possibility the propulsion team may need a few minutes. Flight termination system is armed for flight. We're getting ready for T minus one minute and counting. <laughs> Next, we'll see as we get past T minus 40 seconds for final checks of the vehicle. Okay, you can see the clock has recycled. Flight director has called a hold. We are recycling. For the moment, we'll see where they move the clock back to. They could hold at T minus 40 seconds. They could go to an earlier point. Give us a minute to listen into the nets and we'll see if we can get you more information to share.
Brian Innsbrucker again here at the Hawthorne webcast desk. We're holding a T minus 40 seconds. What we've heard so far is we have a couple of issues we're working. One is the booster tank pressurization. Uh, final pressurization was just a little bit uh, long. That's not unusual. We've held a T minus 40 seconds before to pressurize. That appears to have been resolved. At the same time on the second stage, they're working some final purging. Uh, we should know very shortly if that is cleared and if we'll continue the countdown. Everyone, especially that person, is excited <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> like John said, we should know shortly um, if we are able to continue. Uh, but as we mentioned before, we are able to hold uh, up to 15 minutes and still be able to lift off today. Yeah, on Falcon 9, it's a little bit different. Once we start propellant loading, we pretty much have to go at the targeted time. Otherwise, the propellants can warm up and we may not have the performance for that particular uh, mission profile. It's a little bit different on and Starship. Folks, if I can interrupt, yeah. it looks like they're clearing all the flags and we're going to release at T minus 40 seconds. That is amazing news. Amazing. <laughs> Team working quickly through their issues on first and second stages. And I'm sure all of the rehearsals uh, and simulations that they've been doing have prepared them to evaluate this data quickly to try to get us in for today's launch attempt. For those of you just joining, we have a brief hold um, at the T minus 40 second mark. Uh, the team is resolving one issue with the bleed purge on the stage two Raptors. Um, like John just said, the teams are quickly working that and it looks like the flags are being cleared as we speak. So we should be able to resume the launch countdown any moment now. And it's worth noting on Starship that once we resume the countdown, it restarts from the 40 second period and then we keep exactly. going unless another condition pops up. So stick around because <laughs> uh, Starship could be going here real soon. <laughs> Don't walk away, that's for sure. <laughs> Amazing views here coming to us from Starbase, Texas. Uh, Aerodynamic pressure. And as the velocity increases, the density of the atmosphere is decreasing, Max Q. lessening stress on the vehicle. The call out, Max Q now. Continuing to watch the first stage as we head down range. Hundred seconds into flight. Our next major activity is going to be shut down of the first stage. Houston tracking station now acquiring the vehicle. With shutdown, we will get separation of Starship and Super Heavy and ignition of the Starship engines. When Starship separates, we light up six engines in a staggered sequence. 
If all goes well, those six engines will burn for almost six and a half minutes. Onboard view from Starship. And there's views of the Raptor engines on the second stage as we prepare for stage separation. Now after stage separation, the first stage will flip and begin a boost back maneuver for landing in the Gulf. Continuing to fly, two minutes, 40 seconds. Let's get ready for main engine cutoff. Boost engine cutoff. Beginning the flip for stage separation. As of right now, we are awaiting stage separation, where Starship should separate from the super heavy booster. Yeah, Kate, right now it looks like we saw the start of the flip, but obviously we're seeing from the ground cameras the entire Starship stack continuing to rotate. We should have had separation by now. Obviously, this is, uh, does not appear to be a nominal situation. Yeah, it does appear to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. to clear the pad and make it this far into the test flight, the first integrated flight of the booster and the Starship vehicle. Live view there of our control center at Starbase, uh, which we refer to as Star Command. <laughs> as we said before, obviously we wanted to make it all the way through, <laughs> but to get this far, honestly, is amazing. <laughs> well, if you're just joining us, Starship just experienced what we call a rapid unscheduled disassembly or a RUD during ascent. But now this was a development test. This is the first test flight of Starship and the goal was to gather the data and as we said, clear the pad and get ready to go again. So you never know exactly what's going to happen, but as we promised, excitement is guaranteed. And Starship gave us a rather spectacular end to what was truly an incredible test thus far. Now, as we mentioned at the start of today's program, any and all the data that we collected during the test is going to help us with further development of Starship, and it's going to improve the vehicle's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life multiplanetary. It's really worth noting that the flight path was designed to be over water and all the air and sea space along with that flight path and those surrounding areas were cleared in advance of the test. And of course, we're going to be coordinating with local authorities for the recovery operations. But honestly, what an exciting morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we had a successful liftoff from Starbase, Texas at 8.28 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we cleared the tower, which honestly was our only hope. <laughs> we cleared the tower and all the data that we collected all the way through um, the all those Raptor, those 33, although I think we saw that three Raptor engines were out, um, but we got all that data and I, we got so far as to hoping to see the, the Starship, the second stage, separate from the first stage, the super heavy booster. And unfortunately, we didn't make that happen, but that's okay. It was the first integrated launch. Um, and honestly, today was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely incredible day. Uh, we made it through a number of those initial uh, test objectives with getting booster ascent, getting all the way through the countdown, working some issues yeah. at the end. Like, Total really fantastic tank. day. Got through the gate of T minus 40 seconds on the second try. 
everything released, the hold downs, the quick disconnect arms, yeah. everything moves out of the way. And then we got the vehicle off of the pad through max Q all the way up to stage separation, even starting into the prep for stage step. And then as we say, a lot of excitement. Yep. <laughs> Honestly, my face has had a smile on it since lift off and now my face hurts. <laughs> now, since we don't have any insights on the cause of our rapid unscheduled disassembly at this point, we're gonna end our webcast here. Teams will continue to review the data and work toward our next flight test. But before we go, a big congrats to the entire SpaceX team on an exciting first integrated flight test of Starship. And of course, a shout out to our viewers. We appreciate you joining us. And as always, we thank you for your interest in Starship, SpaceX, and your ongoing support.